Hello. Uh, my name is Madeline. I um, am a program manager and I work with Arafmi Queensland Mental Health Carers. Can everybody hear? Is that better? Yeah. Uh, Arafmi stands for the Association of the Relatives and Friends of People with Mental Illness. Um, so, just to talk about it in a nutshell, close relatives are the real primary carers for most people who have a mental illness in our community. More than 95% of people with a severe mental illness now live in the community and two thirds of those people live with and are cared for by their family members or loved ones. And that role doesn't just take a back seat when there is a service provider um, providing community access and lifestyle outreach to someone. Families still play a significant role in people's lives. Okay, so RAFM is a carer-based organisation formed by families who experience the loss, loneliness, stigma and isolation of caring for loved ones with mental illness. In 1976, a young social worker on his final placement at the Stones Corner Community Mental Health Service, the first community mental health service in Brisbane, in Queensland, recognised that there was a need among the families of his clients for relatives to have a discussion group. And from that very small group, a RAFMI was formed. They took on the formal name of a RAFMI in 1977. The group commenced with five people who discovered many for the first time that they were not alone. That, that quote, you are not alone, soon became part of the vernacular and the language of Arafma Queensland, and it is now the, the byline. Um, so from those five people who came together to begin the fragile process of hearing each other's stories and working through their pain together with tears and laughter, they started to begin a regular fortnightly meeting. So these five people started up a group that's grown into um, a significant care organisation in Australia. They adopted formal rules for their meetings in 1981 and the group became incorporated in 86 and became a RAF in Queensland in the year 2000. Arafmi Queensland is also part of Arafmi Australia and joins with other Arafmi uh, organisations in the other states of Australia and come together as a national group as well. So the organisation's mission is to enhance the well-being of family, friends and others caring for people with mental illness and or psychiatric disability by providing quality support, education and advocacy services. Okay, so the aims of the organisation are to provide emotional support for families and carers of people who have a mental health issue, provide accurate information for carers and families, assist carers and families to cope with the demands of caregiving, increase community awareness and understanding of mental health issues and the carer's role, reduce the stigma attached to mental illness and convey the needs of carers and families to healthcare professionals, government and the community. Issues for carers, feeling overwhelmed, guilt, anger, sense of helplessness, hopelessness, loss of self and their own needs, dealing with a complicated mental health care system which is becoming much better by the sounds of it, and dealing with denial. So the Arachne services that um, Queensland Health currently fund us to provide, telephone support for carers. This was the first, from what I'm told, the first 24-hour support line throughout Queensland. Um, was started by Arafmi volunteers and still um, uh, is provided today, 24-hour care line support and counselling. We all pro also provide skills development workshops. Some of the uh, workshop subject areas that are looked at are fit for caring, um, making sure that carers remain healthy and fit themselves, effective communication, unique process of loss and grief for carers, coping skills workshops, setting boundaries workshops, understanding and supporting recovery workshops, suicide awareness workshops 
and dual diagnosis workshops. We, can also, we also have in-service presentations. We have care retreats uh, where carers will go away and have a lovely retreat together. There are carer support groups all around Brisbane and in the regional areas of Bundaberg, Caloundra, Logan, Cleveland, Maryborough, Rockhampton, Cairns and Toowoomba. We also have a service called Carer Connect which supports families personally with plans and strategies for coping, assists them with referrals, connecting with other services and negotiating with other services, providing information, accompanying uh, carers to court and tribunal hearings, listening and giving out information about our family. We also have a number of respite houses. We have four respite houses in the Brisbane region area where the carer can get a break by their loved one with an illness coming in and staying in a safe place and, um, and a nice um, community house uh, where they can meet with colleagues, peers and uh, supportive staff on site. That's a 24-7 program. There's one at Mount Cravat, which is called Gerundine. There's one at Lutwich, which is Coolabar, which is my program. There's one at Adina, uh, one at Narangbar that's called Adina, and there's one in Ipswich called Carinia. We also, also have a community lifestyle support program called Kui Lifestyle Support, which is funded by the Department of Communities. We also have two new innovations, which are our respite hubs for carers. We have a respite hub in Toowoomba called Gwondolin and a Redlands hub called Warrawee. And that's a place where carers can come and get away, stay overnight. Um, it's a really nice place. Staff are on site. There are carer <coughs> workshops, support, um, all sorts of things. So they're, they're a bit of a new innovation for us, focusing more on the carer. We also have a lending library. Uh, we have newsletters for members. Uh, we have information and referral services. We also provide face-to-face -face counselling. We have two very um, dedicated um, psychologists who work with the organisation for many years, volunteering their time once a week, and um, carers can get some personal support and ongoing counselling through that. Uh, we provide community awareness and education through facilitating workshops and information sessions. And we have at times also done education and training for workers around working with carers that has been individually designed to suit that organisation's requirements. And so that's, that's all. It was short and sweet. I'm sorry, I probably rushed through it a little bit. Um, uh, so thanks for your willingness to find out what we offer. Um, we're really excited to be part of um, recovery and um, the changes and innovations coming to the sector. We've been in the sector for about 15 years and it's great to see. Thanks. Thank you.